Hello YouTube, it's me, Eggs. Today we will be talking about patch notes that will probably make you cry. You're never gonna play the game again. Oh my god! Psych. Anyway. <laughs> and more tokens. Players who have not yet finished Series 3 will now earn 4x more tokens than before. Shop update. Cards can now be acquired from the shop in two different sections. Choose your card. Series 3 cards have been separated into their own shop section. Instead of purchasing one Series 3 card a month, players can now choose one Series 3 card to unlock each month for free! Exclamation point. So save those tokens for the Series 4 and Series 5 cards! Token Shop. The Token Shop now contains only Series 4 and Series 5 and Ultimate Variants. General update. General updates. Seasonal series drop. Some cards have been dropped down to a lower series. Cards dropping from series 5 to series 4. Zabu, Sauron, Shanna, Dazzler, Shadow King. Cards dropping from series 4 to series 5. Mbaku, Orca, and Atuma. When you tap on a card for more details during a match, the big card detail screen now features arts credits and card mods, so now you'll know exactly what. You'll know exactly what what? Guys, we'll know exactly what. Exactly what? New sounds for Thanos, Nimrod, Master Mold, Negasonic, Teenage Warhead. Hell yeah. New location sounds for Morag and Bar Sinister. But Bar S oh, Bar Sinister didn't have a sound. I was thinking Bar with no name. The Almighty Thanos now has visual effects along with all of the Infinity Stone. Balance updates. The unscheduled changes to Zabu and Silver Surfer made the metagame shifts for the last month more difficult for us to predict and we weren't able to make timely adjustments for technical reasons. In that time, Thanos became one of our most dominant decks yet. His weak matchups versus Zabu and Surfer had really been holding the Mad Titan back. Tree-based decks were another big winner here, and both of these archetypes have exceeded our tolerances for game balance. Their tolerances. This patch adjustments are aimed at restoring order and weakening each of them. We're continuing to explore updates and improvements to both our balance technology and our philosophy around scheduling changes we look forward to sharing that with you soon thanos 611 to 610. we increased thanos power in the previous patch that was built during a time when zabu and silver surfer were suppressing the success of thanos space decks we're happy to keep him at nine plus power for shang chi's sake but given his recent success we thought it appropriate to pull back on that buff just a touch this change won't dramatically impact the success of Thanos decks, as most of the strength is in the stone's interactions. Space Stone. Next turn, you can move one card from this location, draw a card. Change to. Next turn, you can move one card to this location. Whoa, okay. It's like Cloak, yeah, interesting. This is amongst the strongest of the stones in the Thanos deck due to its ability to create bonus lockjaw triggers and uh, disguise where strong cards might move. This change reduces its efficiency, is that an error? With lockjaw by removing the incentive to play Space Stone itself for a lockjaw trigger. Blending the number of bonus triggers of pro opportunity for lockjaw and restricting the strategic options for late game movement. We expect this to reduce the tactical flexibility of Thanos decks and make them more fun to play again. Quinjet now reduces cost to a minimum of one. We knew this was happening. Guys, we knew this was happening. That's fine. This is fine. Everyone calm down. This is what we asked for. It's not ruined. This is a perfectly fine nerf. Listen, listen to me, chat. You are never going to be happy. Everybody complains about Thanos. They complain about how strong it is, that the zero cost cards, Lockjaw, and then you get a nerf to a card that is clearly broken for not only Thanos, but other decks. This is a fine nerf. Get over it. Cost reduction is powerful, and Quinjek was one of the very few cards capable of reducing multiple cards' energy cost to zero. While we've enjoyed this interaction in some cases just as the Hood's Demon, ultimately it creates both an ongoing risk for future design space as well as fueling the dominant Thanos decks for of today. This change should be a meaningful net reduction in strength to Thanos decks across the board. The thing is, is we have to look at the big picture, right? This is such a problem that I feel like a lot of people don't really do. They don't look at the big picture of the situation. You need to be able to realize that there are more cards coming out. With these changes, it's such a big, it's, it, it's looking into the future and we have to get past the fact that it's ruining the game now, which it is not actually not doing, 
there's so much more that is going to be coming out soon that these changes are adjusting for the future. Get over it. Red Skull. 515 to 513. Enemy cards at this location have plus two power. Change to plus one power, which is fantastic. This change is singularly aimed at reducing the strength of combining Red Skull with Shuri and Taskmaster. Outside of those interactions, this change is mostly a buff to the base case usage of Red Skull, giving you nine or 10 power at crowded locations rather than seven or nine. Hell yeah, I'm happy with it. That's great. G-Hulk, 610 to 69. Come on, 69. Nice. She-Hulk is a key component of the strongest Shuri decks, but it sees widespread play in various decks thanks to its strength alongside Sunspot, Wave, and Moon Girl. We mostly think that's cool, but that she's more powerful than she needs to be for those combos. In addition, we want to encourage playing actively to locations rather than holding cards for explosive turn sixes, so we're continuing to weaken a few of the best cards for the latter. Sounds fine to me? 6-9? Arrow. 5-7. Move all enemy cards played this turn to this location to a 5-8. Move the last enemy card played this turn to this location, okay? Before you guys cry and say that it's the card is dead, guys, you do realize that we're all sitting here crying about the fact that we can't play our turn six She-Hulk Taskmaster, right? And saying, oh no, you know, Arrow f me every single time. It does not, it does not. This is a great change. Get over it. Arrow is a tricky card for us. The actual game balance for Arrow has been healthy and she fulfills a vital role in our game to, by providing interaction, especially against dangerously polarizing cards like Galactus. It's important for Arrow to be versatile and strong in order to be widely playable tech card, but we don't want her punishing the majority of other five cards out of decks. Unfortunately, that's the behavior we've been seeing. Arrow can also be frustrating to see denying players the option to play their own end games. This change seeks to keep Arrow strong where she's needed, foster more competition among five cost cards, and add counterplay to make her more fun to play again. This is great. This is a great change. Mystique, Absorbing Man, and Taskmaster. These cards now require the previously played cards to be in play in order to copy its attributes. Here are their templates. Whoa. This is great. This is huge. Oh my god. Wait, I'm, I love this change. I... This is such a big change. You're not a fan of this change? Why not? Because you are the one playing Taskmaster after your original card was shang chi Is that why? Get over it! <laughs> this is actually such a good change. I love that. That wasn't even something I thought about. Holy. Yeah, exactly. This is great. This was such an obnoxious thing to deal with because Taskmaster would just pull the, the Red Skull 30 power that was off the board. I love that. I think that's great. And I also think that the Absorbing Man is fantastic as well. If the last card you played has an ongoing copy its text if it's in play. So they're just adding if it's in play to that. I'm fine with that. This adjustment is part balance, part matching expectations. A meaningful chunk of Taxmaster's strength in Shuri Dex is his ability to copy a card's power even if it's been destroyed by Shang-Chi or similar. In an interaction that somewhat often gets reported as a bug. Hopefully this change weakens Shuri's deck slightly and more cleanly matches players into intuition when they see these cards for the first time. All right, let's see the Morb. Morbius power no longer updates in hand or in deck, only at location. We previously adjusted Morbius power to update when he wasn't in play to simplify calculating his future power. However, this has proven a bit confusing in comparison to similar cards and also unnecessarily given Morbius is often played very early in the game and isn't very hard to calculate. <clears throat> We're reverting that the change, but we expect to add future functionality to Morbius and all cards with ongoing buffs to their own power that communicate their power in order to make these cards simpler to play. This is not our nerf. It's fine. Learn math. Null's power still updates in hand, but no longer updates in deck. The future improvements discussed above will also apply to Null, but until we make them, he will continue to function differently relative to Devil, Dinosaur, and others. The reason for this is that it's very important for Null players to be able to quickly and precisely calculate his power while making endgame decisions. About their six costs. As a placeholder adjustment, Null will no longer update his power in your deck, so his functionality with Mr. Negative will be the same as his fellow ongoing cards, notably. Oh, oh, this is great. What's wrong with this? There's nothing wrong to, this is great. Because it was fucked up with with Mr. Negative. This makes him actually fantastic for, for Mr. Negative. Because Mr. Neg Negative was causing the card to cost like 50, po 50 power to use or 50 energy to use. 
Y'all wild. Calm down. Calm down. This is so good for negative null. Get over it. <laughs> Widow's Bite, text only. Well, in, this is in your hand. Card, cards in your deck cannot be drawn. Change to, well, this is in your hand. You can't draw cards. Bug fixes. Cards created by Sacred Timeline no longer retain power, energy, alternations when copied to the player's card. Uh, Jessica Jones VFX should move with her now. Great. Um, love that. Raft card VFX no longer goes towards the player who... Okay, that's cool. Cards that lose their ability due to leech no longer get their ability back if they're pulled... <laughs> that sucks. This... This sucks. This is literally buffing leech. This was the one way that you could... This is the one way that you could dodge that. This is bull. Chat, this is where you say, get over it. But I'm not going to get over it because Leech sucks.